Okay, so this is probably going to end up being a long video, so bear with me, but this is going to be your bare bones basic guide to helping you get interested in Warframe. What you're going to see is going to be the first mission, basically what you see when you first broke the game, for the most part. It uh, has the text chat stuff all being in Japanese, because it was on my Japanese account, but the audio is all in English except for the Grenier because, well, they have their own language that they speak. And they also speak English sometimes too, so just bear with that. Um, again, you will see that mission first. I recommend you playing uh, or picking Excalibur as your first Warframe. I'll explain later, but again, I will let you watch that. And then we will come back to this where I will show you and tell you everything you need to know. you've slept. No purpose. No call to wake you. But now, something has risen from the ruins of the old war. The Twin Queens, the sisters, have sent their most beloved commander, Vor, on an urgent mission. To protect the twisted crusade they have begun. To transform the scattered colonies into an empire. To see that the Tenno, hidden and asleep, will never awaken. Very good court. Wake up, Tenno. I see the Lotus has tried to wake you. Pity she's too late. You're my prize now, Tenno. No! We are taking this one with us. What has he done to you? I can't lose another Tenno. I am surging your Warframe's power systems. Quick, use your power. Defend yourself. ship is on its way, but the Grenier will be hunting you. Arm yourself.
There's a cache of weapons ahead. Grab what you can. Good. The extraction point is up ahead. Hurry before Vor finds out you've escaped. Salvage team, why have you not reported in? Take what you can. You will require resources to build yourself into a diverse and effective warrior. You made it. There's the extraction ship. You're not ready to face war now. Use your melee weapon to block the beam and get inside. Rawhide's intrepid heart is pounding. This one is stronger than the rest. Lock the area down. This tender is mine. Quick, get to the console and release the lockdown. Do that, and I will guide you to your old ship. It's your only chance. Anon. The Queens want to destroy you, but I need to know more. of their Tenno. You will have to face four another time, when you're fully restored. We're near, my sons. Prepare the reinforcements. We need that Tenno. A Tenno flows like fire over the battle terrain. Do you remember how to dash across walls? I'm not sure what Vor has done to your Warframe, but we cannot remove it now. Just keep going. Your ship is up ahead. There it is, your ship. Hurry, Vor's reinforcements must be on their way. Your Parazon is a versatile tool. Use it to breach this panel and restart the ship. Stop touching me, you... Are my senses deceiving me? Operator, is that you? Enemy reinforcements are here. Ship Cephalon, we require immediate extraction. The Operator is in danger? I will need a few moments to cycle the engines. Keep going. Nobody knows you're here. Tendo, are you afraid? You cannot hide from these old eyes. I've marked you. You will return to me. to leave.
Good fortune, Hunter. Operator, you have returned. I am Ordis, ship Cephalon, a shadow of my former self. I cannot serve the Operator in such a condition. Order me to self-destruct, I will understand. The Grenier are ravenous for this old technology. It is superior to theirs. Perhaps there are systems left in the orbiter compartment? Look at this mess. Those savages. Components have been removed. The lower orbiter compartments have no life support. Why did the operator abandon me? Arsenal management could be restored if the operator wishes it. You honor Ordis. Now I can supply the operator with better modern firepower. Oh, the violation. Those have been looted as well. We need to figure out what Captain Vor has done to you and stop him. But we'll need help. I found a communication segment we might salvage for your ship. When you are ready, activate your navigation system. All right, so now that you've seen the first mission, what you want to do is basically follow what it tells you because it's got its own tutorial mission type stuff. It'll have you basically installing stuff on your orbiter, which is your ship that you basically live in for the most part. So you'll be coming up to your navigation, you'll be coming up to your maybe your syndicate stuff, maybe uh, your conclave stuff, maybe. But the majority of the stuff that you'll be coming up to install is your navigation, your news, which obviously the news is kind of more like the community thing, where you get informed of stuff that's going on in the game, and in the game's, like, reality, uh, like, outside of the game as well, for, like, events and all that other stuff. Um, and then you'll have the marketplace, and I think the codex as well. And then down here you will have your mod station, your foundry, and then your armory or your arsenal. Your arsenal is where you get, or technically you uh, select your warframes, weapons, and your whole loadout and everything. So your warframe, primary, secondary, melee, your focus school, which that is something you'll figure out or find out about later on. Uh, your exalted weapon, if you have one, because it's not all Warframes have an exalted weapon. And then the Parazon, which is basically only used for hacking, really. Uh, it is also used for hunting down liches, uh, which requires these mods that are called Requiem mods. Uh, we will go over that maybe later, but for right now I'm going to just focus on the more simpler stuff. Uh, at first, you will have just your starting Warframe, so just your normal Excalibur, um, your normal Mag, or your normal Vault, which I don't have my normal Vault right now, um, but uh, you'll have your normal frame, like I said, Excalibur, Mag, or Vault, depending on who you choose, but again, I recommend Excalibur, and I will explain a little later on, not right now, but a little later on, as to why you would want Excalibur. Uh, then you'll have your companion, so either your pet, so your cat, your dog, your sentient, which is basically like just a robot that will be there. It has its weapons and stuff, and it has its perks and it has its downsides and all that other stuff. Um, then you have your gear and you you have your gear and emotes. Gear is just stuff that you take in the battle, so like a codex scanner or a synthesis synthesis scanner, your glyph or your profile picture. Uh, your energy, arc wing, and all this other stuff. Um, don't need to worry too, too much about that, but you will have some things that you need to put in your gear slot, and you'll have to press a certain button to get your gear slot, gear slot up to be able to use it. And then you have your emotes, which is, well, emotes, you can keep going as 
much as you want in the circle to just add and add and add, depending on what emotes you want to use. Um, and then your arc wing kind of load up stuff. So you have your arc wing, your arc wing's primary weapon, and then your arc wing's melee, and your arc wing weapon, but meant for your warframe when he's not in an arc wing mission, as well as a K drive, which is basically a hoverboard. And the K drives don't really have a mission; they're just for use in like open worlds or open world like areas, which is the Plains of Eidolon on Earth and Orb Valis on uh, Venus. This is your relic station for your relics. They are what you use to get prime gear, so prime warframes, prime weapons, prime companion stuff, prime companions, aka your sentience. Uh, as well as the Onanana Prime, which is an arc wing, so a prime arc wing, uh, and then also a prime Kubro collar. A Kubro is basically the dog, and this is your uh, incubator, which will be where you get your your Kubro or your Kavat. Kubro requires you to have an egg. A Kavat is the more painful one, which requires you to get ten genetic codes. Um, I will go over both of these uh, in a little little later on like down the road but uh, the Kvat genetic codes you get from the derelict and then the Kubro eggs you get from Earth and the stasis is just basically where you have all of your uh, pets uh, you will need to obviously get more slots because I think you only have one or two slots available at first so I have two Kvats and a Kubro and a Charger. A Charger is a kind of more alien-esque kind of dog thing. It's kind of really hard to uh, kind of really hard to explain, but it's kind of like just a different version of a dog. Uh, they cost 10 plat to get another slot in case you want more and more pets. Um, your platinum is up here with your credits. The platinum is a premium currency and the credits is the in-game currency. Uh, you, I do believe you start off with 100 plat, which you want to save. I will tell you what to buy exclusively with that first 100 plat, depending on if you actually do have 100 plat. Uh, again, I'm not sure, because it's been quite a while since I was on a new account, so I'm not sure exactly the amount of plat you start off with, but it should be maybe 100. If you press your options button and get this stuff up, you can hover over this to see what boosters you have av uh, available. So I have a credit booster and an affinity booster. Affinity is basically your experience. So I have a booster for those two for another 86 days and 10 hours for credits and another 89 days and 10 hours for affinity. Over here is where you will see your currencies, like I said, your credits and platinum. But there is another one, um, if I were to go into my equipment and go to my inventory, there's another one, I believe, right over here, that appears next to your platinum, which is called Ducats. That is the currency that is used with a Borrow, and basically Borrow is, if you're a Destiny player, Borrow is Xur. So you use Ducats, and credits combined to buy stuff from Borrow. And Borrow shows up not every weekend, but like every other weekend. So like every two weeks he'll show up. You will be able to find out where he's showing up in the solar system by going to navigation. And then basically just pressing circle to back out to see this. And on one of these planets, there will be a symbol that will basically be like, hey, Borrow showing up here, and then you can go to it like this, and you'll be able to see him travel down this line to get to your relay. You can also go to the relay, and he has stations there that will tell you where he shows up, and then how many days, and how many hours, and all that other stuff. Um, that is also where you, where you go to get your ducats, is to a relay with prime gear that you don't want, don't need, or you're willing to sacrifice for ducats. So your missions will first take you from Earth to Venus to Mercury to kill Vor or Captain Vor, which will be on this planet. 
Almost every planet has an assassination mission. An assassination mission is basically a boss fight mission and bosses will drop blueprints for mainly Warframes, but Vor drops blueprints for his weapon, which is if you go to the foundry, because the foundry is where you make all your stuff. Uh, his weapon is a secondary pistol uh, called Seer. So you need to get a Seer Barrel, a Seer Receiver, and an Orkin Cell, well two Orkin Cells. And this will show you what you need part-wise, how long it'll take to make, and what the cost is, 15,000 credits. And if you were to make something, you can also cancel it. So if I want to make this, I can make it. It'll take 12 hours, or I can rush it with platinum. But if I hover over it and press R2, I can cancel it, and it'll tell me what I get back. For whatever reason, the Argon Crystals are an exception to this. They won't come back because they actually expire and they are the only component that you can farm that has an expiration date. So you gotta be not really farming them unless you necessarily need them at that moment. So you just always will have zero Argon Crystals until you are willing to spend them on making something. And in the foundry, you also notice that this is where your prime parts and stuff show up because this is where you make your prime weapons. You can't really scrap prime weapons for ducats. You can't trade prime weapons that are already made for ducats. You trade their, their blueprints. You trade their parts. So you want to hold on to them if you want to give them away or make them if you need them. I don't necessarily need the orthos. Other, I don't necessarily need the ortho is prime and I also already have it too so therefore I don't need to make it so that can either be used for ducats or it can be used for just trading other players so uh, my ortho is prime is right here but I have other weapons so I have other prime weapons some story related weapons that you get because you do get the broken war and broken scepter from quests uh, Blind Fury, Executioner Shorthand, and Plague Naginata are, uh, they're Zaws. They are custom player made weapons or melee weapons. You can make melee weapons on, um, Cetus on Earth. That's a place that you can go to. It's an open world area where you can do bounties and just farm other stuff. And that's where you can make your own melee weapons. And the same goes for Fortuna on Venus with the Orvalis area. That's open world and it will allow you to make your own custom secondary weapons. Uh, in the future, it will also allow you to make your own primary weapons as well. Uh, the three Kuva related weapons I have equipped right now are Lich Weapons, which is basically a Nemesis-like type program where you kill an enemy and he will be tailor-made based off of what Warframe you used, what weapon he is going to be giving you, and a bunch of other stuff like that. I'm obviously probably speaking a bit fast, so I'm going to try and kind of slow myself down here, but uh, another thing is you are going to have mods. You are going to have mods that you're going to be farming up, and you're also going to be getting duplicates of a lot of them. What you want to do with duplicates is just come here the duplicates sort by duplicates and you will ha uh, have the most duplicates going all the way down to the least amount of duplicates that you have what you want to do is keep farming them up you don't really ne need to farm them because you'll get them just daily while doing missions you just select them select all and then just go back one I always like to keep just one of every mod just for the sake of it and you can either dissolve them into endo which is what you use to upgrade your mods or credits uh, early on, you might not be upgrading your mods as much, so you might not want to dissolve them to endo. You might want to get them up for credits, especially if you can get up to a certain amount. You can do an LFG or whatever and go over to the recruiting, recruiting tab, which is basically the channel where you are doing your LFGs, where you're looking for a group or looking for this. And in here, if you have a certain amount of credits, then you will be able to 
say I'm a new player I'm looking to do this and basically what this is is on Neptune I believe it is the index you want to do the index you want to have 50,000 credits invest 50,000 credits do a round of this with someone that can carry you and then that will then give you a profit of 200,000 credits and then from there just keep doing this and then you'll be able to make the amount of money I have now and then some it does take a while to farm up and then having a credit booster will also increase the amount of profit you get as well um, as well as when it comes to the solar system you have to unlock each planet so you don't have all these planets available to you at first you start off with earth and you have to do the Venus Junction and then you can do the Mars Junction after Venus I believe yeah so you want to take a look at your Venus Junction or not even your Venus just any of your junctions look at the challenges you have that you have to complete like apply four mods to a single Warframe collect 20 mods complete Vor's prize upgrade any mod to rank 2 or higher complete that and then go to the relay and seeing as we're now talking about relays, I can explain as to why I say playing as Excalibur is a highly recommended thing, in my opinion. I will first remove my cat and then just come on in to the relay. So you can skip the cinematics, it doesn't exactly work all the time for a lot of things, but basically what you want to do is you want to come here. You can come here even if you don't have all the challenges completed, but you will then be presented with a junction challenge list, which basically tells you what you're missing. What you're missing. And then what you want to do is you want to confront the specter, this will unlock your abilities, and as Excalibur, you want to press R1 triangle, slide, press circle, blind them, and then just do that, and you will instantly win. Obviously, it might be hard for you to hear me because of all the no uh, all the music and all the stuff that's going on. But it's basically, you first come in, you won't be able to use your abilities, but you open this up, quickly hold R1, tap triangle, run to the side, Hold L1 to slide. When you slide, press circle. That will do a blind ability that will blind your enemy. And then from there, just press circle once. And that should kill the specter. And if it doesn't, just spam circle and it just keeps swinging away. From there, the specter will die. You will complete it. You will then come here. And you will basically just, like, kneel and then you unlock the junction. The junction is complete and you can move on to the next planet. And basically that same exact tactic works for all the specters throughout the entire solar system. Allowing you to complete the challenges, come in here, do that quick thing, and get your relay done with almost within seconds. And then from leaving the relay, what we will move on to is mastery. So when we get back to the orbiter, I will talk about mastery. Alright, so when it comes to mastery, you will always see uh, when you open up your, uh, your pause menu. It will be on your glyph right there. Uh, my mastery is 21. And when you hover over your profile like this, that there's going to be that bar. It'll fill up, and when it does fill up, it'll flash. 
you will then have a new tab up here that will do mastery up or mastery rank up or whatever. Don't do that because you want to come to a relay first. Because in a relay you have a place that you can go to that is uh, called Cephalon Slimeris. You can fast travel to him. And I'll explain why you want to practice first instead of just doing your mastery rank up test. Okay, so open, open up your pause menu, go to the fast travel, and fast travel to Cephalon Samaris. From here, look to your right, go here, and seeing as you will be mastery rank 0 and you want to go to rank 1, you come to here, master rank 1 test. Press square. It should give you an option to practice, but I guess not. A Tenno must be a master of all their weapons. Prove yourself with your primary weapon. But obviously this is an easy one. It's straightforward. You just use your primary weapon and just do that. You just shoot him. I believe you can handle more. You obviously can't use your ability, so you can't spam your abilities. You can't use your melee or you can't switch your secondary. So you're forced to use your primary. So make sure you have a primary that you feel confident in using. Obviously, I'm not gonna die because my health and shields are really high. Excellent. But Continue. still, you're you're not gonna wanna stand still like I am. You wanna move around, slide, kind of just not die. It really isn't that hard to not die in this one. And that will be your mastery rank up test. Now, again, you want to come to Cephalon Slimeris to practice this first. Because if you don't Another practice, well you will then be punished if you fail. If you fail a mastery rank up test, you have to wait a whole 24 hours before you can attempt another try at your mastery rank up test. So, let's just see for one that I can practice on. I will show you an example of that. Because this up here is the rank 29 master rank. So there's that. Um, but I'm master rank 21. So I'm probably looking for 22. Which will then put me here. So obviously because I'm not able to rank up, it's not going to ask me to do a practice because I'm not able to qualify for my rank up. So therefore it's not going to ask me do I want to practice or do I want to rank up. But if you are able to rank up, it will then tell you do you want to practice or do you want to rank up. So. Basically, you practice, you get used to what you got to do. And while you're doing this, you can also get used to the movement and just do this. Bullet jump, jump, slide, roll. Again, bullet jump, slow-mo, slide, or whatever this you want to call it. Bullet time. And then, yeah. So I'm going to just abort that because I'm not going to take up too much of your time. Um, and the next thing we'll go over is the ships because you can see my ship in the loading screen every single time. You will obviously see your ship and everyone else's ship in the loading screens. The loading screens aren't exactly static. You can move around in them and you can just do whatever for the most part. It's not like Spyro, you can't like shoot fireballs or whatever, but you can at least move around. There is not too big of a difference when it comes to 
your ships, but it's mainly what you want your ship to look like. So I will go to my ship and select my ship and all the other stuff. So, and then I'll explain what you might want from your ship, maybe. So, if we were to go to Equipment, and then go to Orbiter, we can custom select Landing Craft. And the one I have is called the Scimitar, which is this. This isn't the default look of it, this is just the skin that I have. The one that you will have by default, again, this isn't the default look of it, but this is the default ship that you will have this list set. And basically, if you look through the ships, you will be able to see the name of it, what the cost is, because you can buy it, or you can, again, grind for it and get it for free. I will show you, kind of show you how you can do that. But as you'll notice, underneath the name of the ship, like the scimitar, you will have something else. It will say air support for the scimitar. Air support, carpet bomb. Ordis drops bombs in a line from your position, the, the beacon you placed. Let's set. Air support, override. Ordis hacks into enemy systems and disrupts security protocols for a short period, meaning if you have an alarm going off and you activate your air support, then it basically will turn off the alarms. This will be basically a carpet bomb. It, it's basically self-explanatory. And then the Xyphos and the Mantis is basically a sentry, a sentry gun. It basically just puts down a sentry gun wherever you place it or wh wherever you place your air support stuff at. As for the Medi Tower, it's basically just a tower that will heal people nearby it, so your allies. Um, and then after you do that, you can come to Operator, your you customizer that? landing craft. And this is where you will be able to customize the color of it, as well as the skin. The skins you do have to buy. Uh, the Prisma skins will always be sold by Borrow. Not every single time he shows up, he will again have something random. So if you see a skin that he has that you want for something, like whether, whether it's a ship or a weapon or in a Warframe or whatever, by all means, if you can afford it, go get it if you want. Albeit, Borrow will also sell weapons or weapon variants. And those weapon variants you will want to buy for the sake of leveling them up. You will level, you level them up, you will then get progress towards your mastery. Because when you level up Warframes and weapons, that progresses your mastery. You have to max out a weapon or Warframe to the max level, which is normally normally 30. I do say normally because there are some weapons that will go up to 50, or not 50, 40, but that requires 5 Forma and will take a, quite a bit of time. Because when you Forma a weapon, or a Warframe, it resets it back down to level zero. I mean, you gotta re uh, get the experience to get it back up to 30, or to get it to its no new level. So based, based off of the level 40 weapons, depending on what f amount of Forma you've put into it, it could, it could either be level 32, because for each Forma in a level 40 weapon, it will increase the level cap by two. So when you first get a level 40 weapon, the max level it will be allowed to go to is 30 until you form it and then you form it and it uh, put a forma on it and then it will bring it up to a level 32 that you gotta you know farm the xp for so go from the level 0 to 32 or 34 36 38 or the new not new but you, the actual max cap of the weapon 40 which will then give the progress for your mastery and will count it as being mastered in your mastery which you will see here in the codex if you were to go to universe and then select your weapons go to universe and select either warframes and arc wings or companions or weapons you will see that it will be mastered so everything that is mastered will have this little icon right here in the upper right hand corner so if you were to go to my kuva we weapons which is let's just actually just search real quick because you can search for whatever you're missing or whatever you want or whatever you're looking for particularly we go to kuva and we look at the weapons i have so the twin stubbas the shell dig and the chakar the chakar is the only one that i have mastered the shoe dig is at i believe 36 and that's at 34 i think 
I do have to check. So all these weapons are Kuva Lich weapons. All of them except for the Keshig and the Twin Roga. Those are not Kuva Lich weapons. Um, so we have this being the only Kuva Lich melee weapon. These being all the Kuva Lich primary weapons. And these being the uh, all of the Kuvalich secondaries, again, except for the t Twin Roga. It will obviously be obvious to you if it's a if it's a Kuvalich weapon, because if it is, it will have Kuva in the name. So Kuva Seer, which is Vor's secondary, and then whatever else. So we just clear the uh, search by holding down the L3. Press L3 to search, or you can click up here. And then again, so you'll be able to see all your mastered weapons from here, and as well as what you don't have mastered. So in your weapons, you have your primaries, secondaries, and melees, but also included with all these weapons is also the Arkwing weapons. I didn't mean to click on that. Uh, you also have your Arkwing weapons, which you will have to scroll all the way down, because the normal, normally the Arkwing weapons are always at the bottom, at the very, very, very bottom. So you have all of your... Uh, all of your uh, Arkham weapons, and next to the name, you will have that symbol right there. We'll like a white and kind of like a, a somewhat of a purplish, bluish kind of color to it. That is more of a login weapon. So a weapon that you will get normally after hitting a certain checkpoint in your logins. So you won't be able to get this for quite some time because I haven't even had the option to get that myself. The logins system has changed in a way, so you have checkpoints at which you can select certain things so you can get some things earlier than you would have been able to get them before so when it comes to the mastery or not mastery but the, um, the login weapon stuff the ones that I've had are uh, the Sigma and Oct uh, Oct I really I'm having a hard time with really pronouncing it but I've had the Zenistar I'm, I'm gonna go back to the other one uh, but the Zenistar um, then there is the Sigma and Octantis. And then there is, if I can find it. There is one more, I believe. No, that's not it. Um. the Azima, and they all have, maybe not all, but like some of them will have a secondary ability. So like this one will shoot out a disc, which is like right here. And that disc will shoot out any remaining bullets in the magazine in a radius of where that disc will land. Uh, the disc in the Zenistar will basically pulse a certain damage element type. So it'll normally be, I think, heat. But you can make it other things like gas or whatever. The Sigmund Og Oct Octanus doesn't have uh, a, an ability like that because it doesn't have a disc. Uh, and the uh, Azima or whatever the hell it was called. I can't remember what it, what exactly it was called. I think it was the Azima all the way down here at the bottom. Oh no, Zenith. Um, that also has an ability because it's got the disc. I just I don't remember or don't know exactly what it is. Um, deploy the radar disc to reveal hidden enemies and then strike with precision shots that punch through all obstacles in the way. So you can obviously click on a weapon and learn more about it, including its stats, or better yet, its base stats. Because obviously the stats will change depending on what mods you have on it. Alright, so now that we're done with that, we can go here, we can look at all the Warframes. So you have your normal Warframe and then you have your Prime Variant. The Prime Variant is all being like the ones that you get from the relics. Excalibur Umbra isn't a Prime, but he has Prime Warframe stats. And the reason behind that is because Excalibur Prime will never actually be a thing. Because it was a Founders uh, exclusive thing for PC. So only certain people who were lucky enough to be around the game at its original launch will have an Excalibur Prime. They don't really use them that much, they maybe will use them every once in a while or just to show off or whatever, but normally you won't see an Excalibur Prime ever. 
you will mainly also never see an Excalibur Prime on console. Now, if you do, it's probably because the person's probably hacking or doing something or whatever. But again, you won't see an Excalibur Prime. There isn't really much going on with Excalibur Prime anyways, other than just a helmet change. And you will see that when you look at certain mods. Or when you go into like the Orc and Derelict or Orc and Derelict Vaults or whatever. Um, so yeah. So these are all your Warframes as well as your Arc Wings. So I've only got the Odanana, the Odanana Prime, and the Amesha. So I'm missing the Elytron and the Itzel. Uh, I don't have this Master, I don't have this maxed out. I have the Odanana maxed out, but not the Odanana Prime. I almost have it maxed out. And the reason behind it is because the, uh, the Arc Wings don't really have good XP farming missions. The, the XP gain is pretty abysmal. It's, it's pretty terrible. It's just... It's take it's, it's something that just takes forever to farm up the XP for them. As for the Warframes, they, they typically will have an easy mission to farm. If you're new to the game and you happen to have the right uh, mods and you're very capable, you could probably do, say, like an LFG where you're saying, like, you're a new player, you're looking for Hydron Wave 20 or whatever, or 15, which will basically be this mission right here. It's defense. This is typically the mission people go to to farm XP. It's obviously like one of the last planets you get to in the solar system, other than obviously the Void, but this is like one of the last planets you get to. Not every mission on here is like a normal mission. Uh, this one will be used mainly for XP farm. Uh, then you have these missions right here, which are arena missions, which is basically you just you farm for like points to do the, uh, the next higher up uh, arena. This will also be what you use to farm Endo if you really wanted to, but again, if you just farm mods through just doing missions and other shit, you can turn that into Endo. You will also have um, this assassin right here, which is what you use to farm to get Saren. And then when it comes to Mars, there is a place called Maru's Bazaar, and you also have an alert on it every week. So you have a weekly alert, and basically from Mars, Maru's Bazaar will have a weekly uh, alert that will allow you to get a Iatan sculpture. You do that weekly, you get the Iatan stars to fill that sculpture, and then you can go to the Maru's Bazaar to turn in those sculptures for Endo. I will show you kind of what that will look like. So the Iatan sculptures are always here in the mods, as you probably saw earlier. You will have the Iatan treasures, you come here, you have your stars, and then you also have your sculptures, which you then can select. And there will be an option to auto install these stars, or you can just install them manually by just looking at them and go click, 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 or a click or whatever. You know, you just insert them to where they belong. You will have some that will be the cyan. The cyan is the most used one, but there are uh, amber ones that you need to place every once in a while for certain ones. And these are the more rare stars to show up. I did have a, a crazy amount of them, but then I, you know, kind of like just loot collected these for the endo, which was a stupid mistake on my part, but again, I'm suffering for it because of that. So don't do that necessarily. You want to save these to be used on the sculptures themselves. Did you fuse your mods, operator? Did they anger you in some way? So again, this is where you're gonna be making a lot of your stuff. So your your utilities, your warframes, then you will have the tabs for everything you own, the what's ready to be made, what you can make, your warframes, which will be your normal and prime variants, and then you have your primary weapons, your secondary weapons, your melee weapons your arc wing, which arc wing will be where you will find your arc wings and your arc wing weapons as well. So they're all in one place. And then you will have your landing craft, which is where you can go to make your landing crafts. So your Mantis, your Scimitar, your Xyphos, never the Lisette because you always start off with the Lisette. So you, everyone has a Lisette, so there's no need to farm for it. Um, Nitane, by the way, is also a component that you will only get from nitane alerts so the only way you get alerts or the only way you get nitane is from the alerts that will pop up up here which you will have to keep an eye on which you just come here 
and typically just tap R1 uh, at least twice. So R1 wants to get this up and then just move over one tab to here. This will be where all your alerts are. So you will have your arbitration alerts, uh, your weekly alerts, and then your Kuva siphons, and then any other normal alert will show up along this list here. Then you have your invasions. This is where you'll get some other stuff like dead knight injectors, fudrons. Uh, oh, wait a second. Oh, okay, that's the, that's the name of the mission, not what the, it's going to give you. All right, so detonate. And so basically, invasions will have you choosing a side. Will you side with the Grenier or the Corpus? Obviously, if it's against the Infested, you can't really side with the Infested. So therefore, you're always siding with the Grenier. You do the mission three times, or you do a mission with the, this invasion three times, because the mission will probably change. It'll probably be like a defense, and then it'll... It could change to a rescue or an exterminate. You complete it three times, so complete once, twice, and then three. You complete it three times. You are then able to get your reward, which it won't be an immediate reward. It'll be sent to you in your mail when this invasion is over. And then, yeah. So then you also have invasions like this that will give you parts. So if I actually just come out of this and then, yeah. So I just messed that up, but uh, you come to here and you have the Snipertron Vandal stock or the Twin Viper Wraith stock. And these are different variants of already existing weapons, which you will have to do these to get the parts for. You will also have this one, which will give you Allied V nav coordinates for Mutilus and will allow you to do Where is it? It'll allow you to do, I think it's on Eris. Mutus Ala V. This, will, this assassination will allow you to get uh, Mesa. And this assassination will allow you to get Atlas. They are a pain in the ass. Mainly this one because it's an Arkham mission. And it takes a lot to actually get to this point. Uh, again, every mission or every planet that has an assassination mission will be where you farm for parts to get uh, a Warframe. And then after that, once you have the parts or before you have the parts, you will come here to the market. You will then press triangle, go to Warframes, just click on the Warframe tab. Don't click on the like sub tabs like any of this stuff. Just cl click on the Warframes. It will bring you here. You can look for a warframe that you want. So, like, say I'm farming for the, um, let's think. Hey, let's say I'm farming for, let's say I'm farming for Obron, even though I have him. You'll come here, and you can either buy him out of platinum, or it will give you the option to buy the blueprint. And then when you buy the blueprint, which will cost credits, versus platinum you will then go from here all the way down to here and go to your warframe tab and you will go to the blueprint that you're, that you're going for and it'll tell you what parts you need what parts you have and then you have to farm for the, those parts and again because i was actually at, on this tab before uh, so we have the uh land and crafts you will then have appearance which will be some operator stuff, stuff that you will know more about later on in the, in the story wise. Then you will have gear, so like the utility stuff like ammo restores, health restores, energy restores, ciphers, which will you will use to automatically complete a hack. If you don't want to hack, then you have specters, which will be just like dummy decoys that will be thrown out to help you in, in, in a way. Uh, the ciphers will only be used, usable in normal missions. I will say what they aren't usable in when we get to that point, but uh, yeah. Then you have other things like these Eidolon and Infested Catalyst stuff. These were used for a, ra uh, a raid, which isn't in the game anymore, so I wouldn't really spend any anything on these anymore. Um... And then this is part of the whole Jordis Golem stuff. So there's that. This is for the uh, Arkwing um, 
launcher for open worlds, this did have like a actual amount that you had to have before they changed it. So now it's always going to be 293 for me because you can't really, you don't really spend any of them. It's an unlimited use thing now, so it wasn't before. This was also a part of the um, uh, uh, of the same raid that these were a part of, I believe. Uh, this is a part of a event that goes on, which will be what you need to take part in, because if no one takes part in this event, uh, then we lose a relay, and eventually well, we won't have any more relays to go to, which will be where we go to get borrow and other a bunch of other stuff. And the same for this, the Razorback and the Fomorian are two events that will show up every once in a while where the Grenier or the Cor Corpus will attempt to destroy a relay. And then you have these Apothics which will be used for like the Titania, Twi uh, Twilight Grove like type stuff. Then you have keys for the, um, for the vaults and the derelict. You also have keys to unlock missions in the derelict and then you also have the assassination keys that you need to do mutilist Alice of Alad V assassinations to farm up for uh, you Mesa then you have modular which is just like things like you can make a MOA you can make a K drive or you can make an amp. An amp is a part of your whole operator stuff, which again, you will find out more about when it comes to that point in the story. You also have some fishing stuff, so like dyes that will allow you to see the fish when they're in the water because normally it's kind of hard to see the, see the fish if you're not using a dye. And then certain baits to get certain fish to come out. And then you have mining to kind of like polish up some of the ores that were gems and stuff which will be used for crafting and making other stuff as well as well as miscellaneous or miscellaneous which is just a whole bunch of other stuff uh, you only make this once and that's for the Vor's prize questline stuff uh, then you have a bunch of antitoxins which I don't really use uh, then you have uh, extractors uh, and uh, this distilling extractor prime which is a part of a, an accessory bundle uh, the incubator power course is what you need to make or better than not make, but hatch your Kubro or your Kavat. That will take like a whole 24 hour period or whatever. And then there is a blueprint for Orkin cells. Uh, you can farm Orkin cells, that's the more eff efficient way. But if you're really, really desperate, you can make an Orkin cell in one hour and get it without having to spend hours of farming for maybe five or six Orkin cells. That's literally how bad it is is it can take half an hour to an hour just to get five or six Oricon cells with the right squad by the way too these also take forever to, uh, to get the mutagen, mutagen samples and you need a lot of them for mutagen mass and also just for research in general uh, the gene genetic codes can only be used twice per pet or maybe three times per pet and that is what you use to work with your pet to like make more and all the other stuff that it, it's kind of like simple but also complex at the same time but we can go over that some other time or we can just take a look at it right here so you take the genetic codes you make three prints I only have one available left or one left I think uh, and then you just store your pet's genetic co code or information and then you can come to your breeding and you can choose to use the genetic code to get another version of your pet so like say if I have a uh, a let's see let's say I have a Smita Kavat I can take the codes to get another Smita Kavat that's maybe male instead of female or maybe female instead of male or if I were to go to the Kubro